We head to L.A. as the Lakers took care of business at home versus the Blazers. LeBron and A.D. put on a show as they combined for 58 points, 17 rebounds. A.D. continues record seven-game streak, 25.10 rebound games. The longest streak by a Lakers player since Shaq in 2001. But the story of the night came when LeBron stepped up to the mic post-game. Take a listen. I was wondering why I haven't gotten a question from you guys about the Jerry Jones photo. But when the Kyrie thing was going on, you guys were quick to ask us questions about that. Okay. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And I don't even want you guys to say nothing. When I watched Kyrie talk and he says, I know who I am, but I want to keep the same energy when we're talking about my people and the things that we've been through. And that Jerry Jones photo is one of those moments that our people, black people, have been through in America. And I feel like as a black man, as a black athlete, as someone with power and a platform, when we do something wrong or, or something that people don't agree with, it's on every single tabloid, every single news coverage, it's on the bottom ticker, it's asked about every single day. But it seems like to me that the whole Jerry Jones situation photo, and I know it was years and years ago and we all make mistakes, I get it. But it seemed like it's just been buried under like, oh, it happened, okay, we just, we just move on. And I was just kind of disappointed that I haven't received that question from you guys. Appreciate it. Okay, here's the concerning photo, which was published by the Washington Post on November 23rd. We now continue the conversation, joined by author and host of the hashtag Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show on the Black Star Network. Roland Martin, welcome to First Take. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And I know it was a quick turnaround for you straight off the plane, so really appreciate you making that time. What do you think, Roland, could be the outgrowth of LeBron's comments here? Uh, this was a one minute and 40 second devastating takedown of mainstream media. When people talk about objective reporting, and in fact, it doesn't even exist. Everything is subjective. Those writers in that room, they determine what they qu questions they ask. Their editors determine what stores they actually run. And this is the fundamental problem in media. When media decides, when mainstream media decides to put its focus on something, oh, they will ask questions for days, for weeks, will drive this thing home. But all of a sudden, you're ignoring this. Now look, I'm born and raised in Houston. I hate the Dallas Cowboys way more than Stephen A or anybody <laughs> else. Everybody knows LeBron James is a huge, was, was, was a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. So how do you not ask him about this? Exactly. But you asked him about Kaepernick. You asked him about other subjects. Th those were decisions those writers made, and he was absolutely right. And this is a fundamental problem in media, and we got to put it out there, and Stephen A knows this. One of the most segregated hours is at 10 a.m. on Sunday. It's 3 p.m. in the press boxes in America. Very few black sports editors in America. And so you have to confront the reality of race in media because you might see several African Americans, a number on ESPN. But when you go into these newsrooms across the country, you see very few African Americans covering sports. And this is a problem. And that's one reason why he didn't get that question. First of all, a couple of things. Number one, it's great to see you, my brother. Uh, you have been missed. It's long overdue. I'm glad that you're on the, on the show today. And this is a guy that's been hosting television. He's been a journalist throughout his career, an activist. And I, I got a lot of love for Roland, so I'm happy to see you here. First of all, let me get that out the way. So thanks for being on the show. Secondly, Appreciate you're absolutely it. right. You're absolutely right. No question it was a big-time takedown of uh, the media. And it should have been, because that's what I peeled from it. A lot of people say, well, he's talking about Jerry Jones. Actually, he was not talking about Jerry Jones. LeBron James was talking about the media. He was saying, how is it that you don't ask me that question? You ask me everything else. And that's why I said last night was one of those nights. As a guy who's been a journalist myself for over 25 years, who's been in the press boxes, who's been in the press, in the press, in the press conferences, in locker rooms and stuff like that, there is no way in hell that LeBron James should not have been asked a question about Jerry Jones when you consider mm -hmm. all the things that he's been asked about that has had absolutely positively nothing to do with basketball over the years. So if you're a reporter in that room last night 
and you had never asked him that question, and he was speaking to you, it's one of those moments where you got to go home, look in the mirror, and say, damn, he, he, he really checked us on this one. Having said that, my question yep. to you would be this, Roland. When you saw uh, uh, the photo of Jerry Jones, when you saw the reaction to the photo of Jerry Jones at the, at, at the protest in, 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 in Little Rock, Arkansas, back in 1957, and you sort of fall out from it, what were the kind of thoughts that went through your mind, especially considering what you heard well, from LeBron well, James last night? Well, first of all, the, the, the photo, it wasn't just they published the photo. This, it was an actually a much larger and expansive story okay. on the Watch most the powerful owner in the NFL, one of the most powerful owners in sports, and how he has not actually led on this issue of diversity. Now, if, you, if, if people listen to that LeBron James clip, LeBron James mentioned he has power. Now, I will, I will disagree with LeBron on that. Within the context of basketball, LeBron James has influence and leverage. Power is from those who own. And so the article talked about Jerry Jones, how he could be a driving force if he chose to. So the, so the photo puts that into context in terms of, okay, you were there, explain that, and then people say, well, folks change and evolve, which is absolutely true. But we also have to come to terms with the fact that people still have certain feelings and perceptions and, and, and how they grew up. And the question is, are they as aggressive at being able to, uh, to force change and make change? And, and the thing about it is, and, and this is one of the mistakes that we make out a lot of time. People say, oh, my God, Jerry Jones is racist. People go, racist, not racist. So then the debate is about racist, not racist. But really, America is really all that stuff in between. I'll give you a perfect example. My new book is called White Fear, How the Browning of America is Making White Folks Lose Their Minds. Stephen A., I've had white producers and bookers, and I've had the host call me, refuse to have me on the show because they said, I don't like the title of the book. What's crazy is I actually write about those very media people in the book. I say because media folk are unwilling to challenge the realities of race in America, so therefore, the reason we don't really talk about it a lot, because who controls media? Who are in the executive suites? Who are the senior producers, the EPs, the line producers? So just like, just like in the press boxes, we have a dearth of diversity in media. And so what happens is we don't have the real conversations because who's calling the shots? Who's the ones in power? Well, I would say... And so what really LeBron was saying is, what? not to the writers, he was also saying to their bosses. How did their bosses not say, hey, when you go to the news conference, be sure to ask LeBron the question about the Jerry Jones story. Mm -hmm. They didn't. So it wasn't just an indictment of the people in the room, the folks who were not in the room, too. Let's get specifically back to Jerry Jones in this regard. Because you'll have players, you know this, you'll have players that have played for him who will swear by him. I have a decent relationship with them. I didn't know anything about, you know, I just, I imagine, you know, you're born in the 40s, 30s, for crying out loud, in the South. I mean, I just have a preconceived notion of the kind of things that you were exposed to and the kind of things you're, that evolved around your upbringing. I've always stated that. But I will ask you this question. I also pay attention, and this is where you come in really strongly in this regard, because you are from Houston, Texas. I also bring Texas into the equation in this regard. When the whole... Colin Kaepernick situation was going down. And Jerry Jones was not an advocate of folks taking a knee, basically saying his team will never do that. Will never do that, right? Before he ultimately did after the ex-president, uh, you know, former president Donald Trump called them sons of bees and stuff like that. The point is, his position is, we ain't never taking a knee. It ain't happening. Not at this franchise. And from what I was told, he had a meeting and he had talked to players and he said, down here in Texas, you know what I'm saying? These folks are going to interpret that as being unpatriotic. And I'm going to tell you right now, if that affects my bottom line, it's going to affect your bottom line. How much does being in Texas and being in that environment, even in this day and age, influence the kind of attitude some would think of Jerry Jones or McNair, who passed away, God rest his soul, or others might right. have? I'm just asking. Well, first of all, uh, that's uh, nonsense uh, from Jerry Jones. But first of all, when we talk about Texas, it's a huge state. So second of all, Dallas County is extremely blue. 
Harris yeah. County, which where Houston from, extremely blue. Bear okay. County, Austin, uh, uh, Ch Ch excuse me, Bear County, San Antonio, Travis County, where Austin is, uh, very blue. So is Texas a red state? Yeah, but there's a whole lot of blue folks in there as well. A whole lot of blue folks who also buy tickets, who also advertise. Uh, but what it also speaks to, this is people don't want to deal with. They don't want to deal with well, the owners of what challenge the players uh, when it comes to their positions. I mean, uh, the former, the, the, the deceased owner of the uh, Texans, uh, Bob McNair, after Obama won, uh, made some comments in the locker room about when the players were excited uh, about, you know, their guy winning. Well, he was a major up. Republican. Jerry Jones gave $500,000 to the campaign of Texas Governor Greg Abbott uh, with the decisions he's made. But what's interesting is that you'll see these owners tell the players, oh, no politics, but in the suite. You will see politicians. You will see presidential candidates. And so they don't mind when they have politics. That's why I go back to who has the power. It comes down to who has the power. And so this is where players also have to, and this is where it takes courage, because let's be real clear, ain't a lot of Kurt Floods today. Not at all. There are not a lot of Colin Kaepernick's today because cats want to protect their paper. But the reality is an owner like Jerry Jones has to also question himself and say, wait a minute, how am I now operating as an owner in the decisions that I make? That's why that Washington Post article was so important because Jerry Jones has the power to make the change. I spoke a couple of years ago to Walmart uh, for the MLK deal, and I said, Walmart, CEO was sitting right there. Y'all have the power. You can literally shift America solely by decisions that you make because you are so uh, you you are so powerful. I've said the same thing to other companies. We challenge companies when it comes to spending with black-owned media and advertising. And so, if you have that kind of power, the question is: Are you willing to use it? The question is: Are you willing to? I'm sitting in Atlanta. In Atlanta, the white business leaders refused to celebrate Dr. King when he won the Nobel Peace Prize. It was the leader of Coca-Cola who said, Atlanta, you need us more than we need you. And if you do not celebrate King, we will move out of Atlanta. Every white business CEO was at that reception honoring Dr. King. Leaders lead, not when it's easy. It's when it's mm. hard. And so Jerry Jones should be leading more. And that's why that article was so important. Gotcha. So the question is, yeah. what informs your leadership? How gotcha. do you use your power? Roland, dropping knowledge. Thank you so much for being with us. We so appreciate, appreciate you, your bro. perspective. And we're up against it, but real quick, people want to hear more from you. Appreciate Where it. can they watch you and buy your book, et cetera? Give us a quick Every plug here. Every night, d d download the Black Star Network app on OTT, my YouTube channel as well, and get my book, White Fear, How the Browning of America is Making White Folks Lose Their Minds. Honest, truthful, and to the point. Roland, thank you so much. We'll talk Take to you soon. Me. All right.